<laughs> okay, I had to do that. I found it. I didn't find the real horse mask, but I found that one. <laughs> it's so hard to breathe in that thing. How's everybody doing? Big meow, welcome. Thanks for always being here. <laughs> I've got some. Silly news. What's up, David? Mackenzie? Joy? Tabitha? Yeah, I got a lot of... Uh, got a lot of people on here. Oh, uh, Tabitha, just started watching this channel a week or so ago some, in some of your lives, Jen. No, I went back and watched Jay's other live videos. Well, thank you. A lot of people did. That's uh, it. Really, it really helped me a lot. I, I really appreciate that. Nay. Joy. Uh, yeah, you can. If your husband's in the video games, uh, definitely you can recommend this channel. Um, my video game channel is just called Doctor Bad Vibes, and that's got more game stuff on it. But it's mostly like retro games, um, and when I stream on, well, when I stream in general, I, I, the mainstream is always, even though nobody's watching it comparatively, uh, the mainstream is on twitch.tv slash Dr. Bad Vibes. I'll put that in the chat, but the stream is always there. But if I'm doing video game stuff, I probably won't stream it to this channel uh, for the multi-stream. And I put that on the regular Dr. Bad Vibes channel. That's the video game one. So sometimes, uh, um, so, and sometimes I'll do both. Like I'll Twitch, Twitch has always got everything, but then I'll, if I'm doing the new stuff or stuff like we're doing today, I'll, uh, I'll start on this channel and I'll roll it over just like Jen did earlier. I'll roll it into the video game one. Cause not, I, I learned that not everybody's into the video game stuff and my video game audience isn't into this stuff. So, you know, I, I gotta kind of treat it like two separate, uh, uh, you know, places. 
And make me oh yeah, don't worry, make me out. Uh, YouTube helps the most right now. And uh, yeah, I didn't have my notifications on. I did hear a few people subscribe, so thanks to everybody that subscribes. It sounds like Ann and uh, uh, Joy just added. But let's see. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for checking it out. So yeah, usually I'll just do, I'll do some silly news here, and uh, I generally draw a little bit that's the new thing i've been doing everybody seems to be into that and i'm into it too i haven't really drawn much in a while doing jen's merchant emojis it's probably the most i've done in a while let me switch over here speaking of merch yeah i've got some of my own merch too if anybody's into <laughs> that kind of stuff and why is my i'm gonna take my goal down why is it messed up again that's Twitch related anyway. Uh, let's see, Ollie's, I'm from Winchester, Virginia. So I'm kind of from sort of Charlottesville outside of there. But yeah, I know Winchester. I've been through there a few times. It's been a very long time. I bet it is, it's probably been like 2010-ish. So I'm sure it's not even the same town. Because it changed so much like over... Uh, like 2005 to 2010, it's crazy. Corey, I like your drawings. Well, thank you, Corey. I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, Sunshine Dog. My son does a sports channel and video game channel. Subs don't seem to cross over much either. Yeah, I mean, it It doesn't. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, especially when I'm doing like retro games, it's like a niche within a niche. So uh, that does not always track. I mean, same with, Jen's audience. I'm I'm very glad everybody followed over. I know this is probably <laughs> out of 146,000 people. I'm glad that uh, you know, at least a few people are into my silliness. Um let me uh check something here. So I've changed I'm trying something new with how I put my drawings up here. Let's see if this works. I'm using like an airplay receiver. That's not it. Where'd you go? Hmm. Well, I was hoping that would work. <laughs> I could see it on my screen, but I can't. weird it's like the beginning of every stream i do oh here we go here we go there we go make it a little bigger so i'm drawing right now i'm drawing on an ipad and it has a very strange aspect ratio it doesn't it doesn't play nice but it's, it's a much clearer view than it had before yeah everybody's talking about the goofy drawing i'm trying to get this up here okay here we go so what i did the last time i did a drawing that um combined all the stories we read last time so there was a guy that hit a, it assaulted a man with a bible at walgreens there was a guy that ate pancakes in the middle of the street and another man uh basically assaulted a family at disney world so I came up with Goofy hitting a pancake eating man with a Bible. That's uh, quality entertainment. Oh, uh, and give me just one second here. Somebody is a few people have asked for the video game channel. I'm gonna post that link in the chat. So if anybody's interested in this one, this is like mainly retro video games. I'm really not on the channel that often. It's mainly just gameplay footage. So it's a little more, uh, it's it's mostly fighting games because that's all people want to watch on it right now. <laughs> I try posting like Nintendo stuff. No, no. Nah. Marvel vs. Capcom. That's all we want. I'm like, okay. And let's see. Well, I've got this up. So we got Goofy. What else do we have here? Oh yeah, that was the. 
Uh, that was that was the stream before. So there was a guy that uh, hijacked a uh, a go kart, and he was chased until he ran out of gas. So I basically made a Mario Kart version of him. And for these that went by, Jen wanted me. Well, people requested a drawing of Jen, and that's what they got. That's not. That's not for real. That was silly. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, we've got some more Florida news if people are <laughs> if people can't get enough of Florida, man. And let me see. Actually, let me get my email. I'm gonna post my email in the chat. I haven't thought about this. If anybody has any silly stories that you want me to take uh, to handle. I'm going to put my email in the chat. So, yeah, if you see anything silly you want to send me, it's drbadvibes at protonmail.com. Send those and I'll save them. Let me switch this. Yeah, <laughs> Jen being naughty. Not really, though. That was all jokes. Let's see. Save the bunch here. Let me start with the... I feel like everything's always insane and, and like, gross. So let me find something funny. I came across this on Twitter. It's not so much a news story. Uh, let me give some context. <clears throat> so or right here. So this showed up because uh well this is misleading. It says a groundhog steals a farmer's crop and eats it in front of a security camera, which is haha ha, funny. That's not that's not really what's happening. This farmer actually set this up. Um he did it on purpose just so uh you could see this groundhog eat. Let's see. Oh yeah, they're you're asking for uh, Jen's email as well. Uh, yeah, let me see. I always forget what that is. I think this is right. It's RHR comments at gmail.com. And if, if you wanted, I'm, I'm fairly certain that's right. I think if you look at the main page on her YouTube channel, she's got a link. Bobby LaFort, thank you for subscribing. Sorry, I couldn't see my notifications. Appreciate that. And so, yeah, Jen's email, that's that's in the channel. My email's in the channel. So anything you want to email us, just hit us up. So anyway, yeah, this made me laugh. Somebody set up a camera to video a uh, groundhog and his groundhog family eating. <laughs> this made it look like he, the, the, he's taunting the farmer, but I think like there's like they set up like a little picnic table. Because it tricked me at first. I was like, I was like, that is a very, it's a very sassy groundhog to taunt this man every day. Like he knows where the camera's at. Hey, what's up, Zwar? My buddy Zwar, he's over on YouTube. I mean, not YouTube, Twitch. He's over on Twitch. Oh, it's science fiction. Hey, what's up, man? I know. Yeah, so science fiction. Saw my merch. I keep meaning to get a beanie and a hat. I keep forgetting. Yeah, definitely check out. If you're over on Twitch, check out Zwar. I know him in real life. He's cool. He's he's uh he's got a very long what, what are you at now? He's, he's at like uh five hundred and thirty some days streaming. Hasn't missed a day yet. If 
540 days. Wow. Yeah, good. That's awesome, man. But yeah, the, the groundhog thing tricks me. So yeah, it's staged. It's still funny. Uh, the guy actually, he's got his own subreddit. It's Chunk the Groundhog. <laughs> So, uh, if you want to check that out, um, he puts up all kinds of groundhog content. <laughs> all right. Yeah, then there's, uh, the Streamlabs merch too. I need to get this for myself because, I mean, people are probably familiar with Teespring. That's where Jen does her merch. Uh. I don't know anything about Streamlabs. I don't know if it's quality or not. I want to, I need to, it's, it's a lot cheaper. So I want to see if it's uh, doable. Oh, just a gent. Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate that. Honk, honk. We are multi-streaming. I'm on YouTube as well. And this is a milestone because I'm, well, Jen and I are very close on our new channels of being, uh, well, I guess monetized is a simple way, but being legitimized on YouTube. And from what I recall before, when that happened, not just from a money standpoint, but when you're in that category, YouTube does a better job of uh, pushing your stuff out. So that's the main thing I'm wanting to get out of that. If I can uh, make the... If we can make these channels do something, we'll do more with them. And, uh, yeah, funny enough, so I've been drawing more on here and live drawing. And, oh, yeah, Tanya. Yeah, so Tanya, the uh, notification then, just a gen, that's a subscriber on Twitch. Um, and it, it, everything is. Uh, the terminology is different on each. So, a subscriber on Twitch is somebody that pays money to not see ads, and that helps me directly. And of course, a subscriber on YouTube is just you know you you know sub a sub on YouTube, and then a follower on Twitch is like a subscriber on YouTube. It's it's very confusing. <laughs> and science fiction, yeah, the beanie is fifteen on Streamlabs. which that's what I want to, I want the beanie and I want, I want to get a hat too. Cause my, I don't even know if it's, or it's downstairs. My, the hat I always wear is like destroyed. <laughs> and uh, my cat's name's Karen honk honk. Yeah. Yeah. I figured you had to go to Patreon. That's cool. Um, but as I've been drawing more, I've been like, I was like, maybe I should buy a better drawing tablet and if you haven't, watched in a bit or if you're not familiar um mainly on the streams i've been using the ipad but when i'm doing it like for real i had this is the tablet i use it's an old uh wacom intuos 3 that i believe i bought around 2004 so this is like a 20 year old tablet i've had it for forever and i thought maybe it's time to upgrade it and i was watching a guy like a pretty prolific uh art youtuber last night and he was giving his opinion on the best tablets you can buy. And his number one pick was this one, <laughs> the one that I already have. He said that he wishes he could go back in time and buy more. And I was like, okay, well, buying new stuff's not the answer. I just need to use what I have. <laughs> Which is not bad. I really do like it. It's just, it's a little disorienting when you, because that one doesn't have a screen. So you're drawing directly on a tablet and looking at a screen in front of you. So it, it, it takes a little bit to adjust to that. But it feels, uh, it feels more natural than, uh, uh, the iPad screen. It, it's where it's so smooth. It's kind of hard to draw on the iPad, but Hey, it's great for doodles. Like a Niv is trying to a Niv the bot is trying to shout out uh Zwar. That's funny. AI learns. 
Uh, yeah, let me see here. Yeah, it's 20 year old text the best. It's silly. Like, even my computer, it's from like 2009. But it's a beast from 2009. <laughs> and, and yeah, in a lot of ways, the older stuff is more reliable. Um, it's. Uh, Oh no, it's not a game. This is just the my layout. That's my I've just got it on my merch website right now. Um but yeah, like I used to fix computers and flip them. I can still do it, but gosh, the the Apple stuff, it's so hard to work on. I think I'm just done. <laughs> I, I can't they're too hard to fix. It's not worth the trouble. And yeah, I've still got Apple computers from the eighties and nineties in storage. I mean, they're all fine. They still work. Um, let me go back here. So, science fiction. So I'd like to have a drawing tablet. I saw one that has like a paper feel to it, but it's about 400 bucks. Honestly, the best thing, like if you don't want, I mean, it depends on what you have. Um, well, let me look while I'm, while I have this pulled up. So I saw this guy. He was going on eBay just to find like an old version of the tablet I had. Um, if you don't need the screen, like these are not expensive at all. Uh, you probably want a bigger one. Which one do I even have? <laughs> I know mine's like an oddball one. Like you can buy two for sixty. These feel good, but you don't have the screen. <laughs> yeah, those are probably mostly my computers. I have a bunch there. I put a lot. Of, last time I was visiting, I did put a bunch up, so it's not as insane looking. But yeah, yeah, if you're wanting this, like, get an entry level um, drawing tablet. I'm trying to see if mine's got the dimensions on it. They made so many of these. Um, I mean, this is probably, yeah, this is nine by 12. That sounds right. This is probably the nine by 12. That's what I've had for a while. I mean, it's, you know, can't really show it here. I mean, you know, it's decent size. It's got enough room to draw. It's good to know they're this cheap, but these are good ones. To, this is a good one to start with. But if you have a uh, if you have a phone or a tablet that has a stylus you can draw with, um. They do make screen protectors that have like the paper texture to them. And uh, uh, I've used that on my iPad. It, it helps a lot. It makes it feel more like paper. That's probably been my favorite way. I was going to do that before this stream. I don't have a screen protector on it right now. I cannot remember. They're not expensive. I just don't know where I put them. So where I've got an older iPad, I think I can buy them for like two or three bucks. So. I may need to stock up while I can. I'll probably st stop making them. But yeah, if, if you get one of these old tablets, if you're wanting to get into this, that's the easiest way, honestly. I mean, this tempts me into getting one of the big ones. Just as a backup. Yeah, this is 20 bucks. Yeah, I think this is literally mine. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> That's tablet talk. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm just looking at chat. I used to buy those Android tablets from Walmart for my kids to play games on for like eighty bucks. Yeah, we used to. I had some of the. Fire tablets from Amazon for our kid until she got a little older. 
but we've I've pretty much been an Apple user since the eighties. I was one of those when I was a kid in school, Steve Jobs, you know, that's when he put all those computers in and uh it worked. <laughs> I got used to using them. I've really not been a PC user much at all. Like I I mean I use Windows and Linux some. I had to use Windows like end of high school and throughout college. Um it was what was funny in college because we had like all these iMacs in the computer labs, but nobody knew how to use them or they were afraid to. So like when it got really busy, I'd be like, well, I'll just hop on the Mac <laughs> and I'd get all my stuff done there and be in and out while everybody was waiting for the Dells to free up. Oh, I see uh, <clears throat> people talking about the uh, zombie uh, cicadas. Yeah, I saw I saw that article. I almost... Uh, I almost put that article in here. Maybe I'll do that for next time. I won an art contest in 11th grade. I drew a symbiote-infused Omega Red fighting Hulk 2099. That's cool. Actually, uh, uh, I may still have the first issue. I, I read those 2099 comics when they were new. Nobody remembers Hulk. Everybody kind of forgot about him. He was weird looking. <laughs> so weird to see a face to your voice, not going to lie. Yeah. I have a face for radio, right? But yeah, it's. I was streaming a long time ago, um, before YouTube. Actually, I tried to be a streamer first, but our, our internet's just so bad, and I'm already out there in the open, so I don't care. I'll get on camera. The sunshine. We have the large iPad for drawing. He did a good job with it. I think he prefers paper and pencil. He said it's too smooth for him. Yeah, that's kind of the issue I have, Sunshine. Um, I like I like everything it does. I actually use the same program I use on the desktop. It's on the iPad, but it's so smooth. That's why I prefer to have one of those uh, screen protectors. I can't... Like, they have them on Amazon. Here, I can just pull it up in front of me. Um... I don't know what they call them exactly. I think it's called, I think if you just look at screen protector, yeah, uh, iPad screen protector paper like. And some of them are outrageously expensive. That's crazy. I mean, I think one will probably last you at least a year. Um, it depends on what model you have. I have an old one. I've got the 10.5 Pro, which I think it's like seven years old at this point. <laughs> I'm shocked it still uh, gets updates, but yeah, like for mine, I think it's like three to five bucks to get a couple of these, but yeah, it's just like a normal screen protector. Um, I'm just picking one at random here. Yeah, you just stick it on top of it. It's got some like texture to it, so it feels like paper. So that's uh, probably the best way to do it on a tablet. Well, thank you, Helen. Helen says I have a lovely face. Yeah, I mean, there's pros and cons of the Apple and Android. I'm not, I'm just used to Apple. That's my thing. Too hard to leave the ecosystem. But yeah, there's lots of options now. I mean, even the one of the things I was looking at, if you if you just want to draw and plug it up to your computer, um, talking about Apple, I'm I'm trying to do Apple uh, keyboard commands. They don't work in Windows. So uh, that's a fun fact, also. So I'm using I, I stream on a on an old Mac Pro. But I run Windows when I stream because Mac OS uh, uh, does not play nice with streaming. It's too hard to get my camera down here. This is the computer I use. <laughs> wow. And somebody's charging two grand for it? That's, that's robbery. This thing was made in, it says 2012, but it's a 2009 design. That's ridiculous. But yeah, it's one of those. That's what I use. So you can still upgrade it and do stuff to it. I've upgraded mine beyond anything that was intended. And uh, that's how I'm still able to use it. Like I'm still I'm playing like relatively uh, 
new, new games on it. Let's see. Oh yeah, 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 Sunshine Dog. Yeah, yeah. It's I didn't know this existed until I started drawing on the iPad. Like I'm still, mine's still the old one. I've got the original pencil. It's you know, it's still good. You don't need a new one, but that paper definitely helps. But if you're just learning, I would recommend just learning on pencil and paper because that's one thing that's never going to change. But yeah, these I was looking at this. It's kind of like the cheaper version of the uh, the Wacom Cintiq. So you can draw directly on these. They have that paper-like texture to them, and you've got the screen. But uh, you do have to plug it up to the computer. So this isn't a tablet like an iPad. But Anyways, that's tablet talk. I do have some news. <laughs> and yeah, Sunshine Dog. Yeah, I mean, if you already have the stuff, why change it? I do. Uh, Apple in general is way more simple, but it can lock you down too. And definitely, yeah, if you want a game, <laughs> like, don't get an Apple. Like, they, they've never been good. I mean, I guess for mobile games, they're the standard now but i mean if you want to play a pc game like yeah i don't i don't i play zero games on mac os i switch over to windows anyways that's nerd talk thanks for coming to my nerd talk um let's see if i can get this lined up here i do have some news just respond I need to fix my my multi chat i'm losing the uh the twitch chat let's see. i used to draw a lot of marvel stuff when i was in high school oh yeah i saw that yeah i still have those number one issues of the 2099 2099 marvel comics and yeah he's those Dell Optiplex cases. Yeah, you can put so much stuff in those. I, it's actually what I run my, uh, when I'm playing uh, my uh, retro stuff, I, all of mine is, all my all my retro stuff's in my, it's, it's in this Dell that's running a version of Linux that's just for emulation. All right, one sec. <laughs> Take a little, let me take a little drink break. <laughs> Been talking too long. Yeah, we nerded out. I used to build and repair computers, <laughs> so I know I know a little too much. I know more about old stuff though. I don't think I touched a, a SATA hard drive until well after they came out. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, so yeah, I've got a lot of floor demand stories, but I've got a couple. I think Jen actually sent me this one. <laughs> All right. If you're not familiar with it, I'm going to do my little intro so I can put the video up for people that did not watch the live or just want to watch the small edited clips. <clears throat> All right. Hello, hello, hello. Thanks for stopping by. This is Dr. Bad Vibes. We've got some news. <laughs> this one was sent in and by sent in texted to me by Jen woman age 25 claims that she has married a six foot tall Halloween doll claiming she's now in a polyamorous rom romance with the toy and her zombie doll wife and the trio is expecting their 11th child <laughs> this is the world we live in so a woman has revealed that she's married a six foot tall doll and claims she's now in a polyamorous relationship yeah we saw that so the 25 year old previously tied the knot with a zombie doll named kelly rossi who she claims is 16 years her senior in 2018 Oh, nice. But Felicity fell head over heels for Robert, allegedly 26, soon after the wedding ceremony, and now the trio are in a polyamorous relationship. You go, Robert. I don't know if that's on purpose. I think he's dressed like Alec Baldwin from Beetlejuice. 
Oh wow. So I guess that's the uh the zombie lady doll. Nice. Yes. So here's the trio with their family. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what to add to that. Uh, hey, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> so Felicity has revealed that she first met the dolls on a Halloween prop website called Creepy Collection, where she per she purchased them for a total of a thousand dollars. She identifies as objectum sexual, meaning that she has sexual and romantic attraction to particular inanimate objects. Okay. They are dolls I met online and felt a spiritual connection with them. And then I sent a, sent, <clears throat> and then I sent away for them because I felt the love she shared. <laughs> it's a polyamorous relationship. Sometimes when it's time for bed, I may only cuddle with Robert or Kelly. Sometimes it's with both. All right. Together, they are raising a large family and have 10 children together, including zombie dolls, Rachel, Luna, Billy, Holly. Victor, Marty, Finney, Grimley, Robbie, and Molly. Sorry, Grimley. In a surprising turn of events, the trio are also expecting another zombie doll child called Peter. Felicity revealed that she proposed to Robert as she explained, I placed a ring on his finger and he looked at me and asked, Are you asking me to marry you? I said, Yes. <laughs> The lovebirds said their vows on Valentine's Day where her granddad unofficially led the ceremony. Oh, man, what was granddad thinking? Oh, yeah, right there. Oh, there's a gallery. What do we have? <laughs> you may now kiss the zombie husband. Sporty. <laughs> I like the goofy grin. It looks like... It looks like they were... They they had a leftover uh, gray alien doll and just said, screw it, just make it a monster. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think we saw most of these. Okay, well, hmm. <laughs> Felicity strayed from tradition and wore a long red dress, sparkly red bow, and a sparkly red bow in her hair. Kelly, along with the Thrupple's many children, watched the service. <laughs> Felicity read out her vows to the alien doll before her grandfather asked Robert to say I do. <laughs> His new wife answered for him. He's stating he says yes before the, sh the pair shared a kiss. Felicity insisted that wife Kelly is not jealous of the newlyweds, adding Kelly feels fine about me being with Robert because Robert and Kelly are good best friends. She concluded in the future, I'd like to take them out more without fear of judgment. What would you be judged for? Objectum sexuality is not a bad thing and not a disorder. It is a, spirit, it is a spiritual connection and not a delusion. I'd also like to put out there that I'm in therapy and my therapist sees nothing wrong with me loving my doll family. You know, one problem at a time. Hello, feet. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jen. Thanks for that. <laughs> I'm going to go back on the... I, I feel like I read a lot. Make sure I didn't miss any comments here. Let's see. Sunshine. Well, I suppose it'd be easy to live with, but they don't talk or you don't have to make them dinner. You can put them in the basement if you get tired of them. <laughs> yeah, money amorous. Oh, yeah. Can't she claim them on her taxes? That's a good idea. Well, well, that was a treat. Thank you. <clears throat> I feel like we need to... I have questions. Excuse me. I'd like to ask you a few questions. So many questions. All right. Well, I hope I didn't lose everybody on that one.
Well. Yeah, never knew I needed a zombie doll in my life. Who knew? So, actually, yeah, this one, Jen also sent this one to me. She's the MVP of the news. <laughs> Going back to the channel's roots. Well, let me do a little intro first. Hello, hello, hello. This is Dr. Bad Vibes. Thanks for stopping by. Today, we're going back to our roots. We're doing an airplane story and a poop story. What could, <laughs> what could be better than both? So, United Airlines flight is forced to divert after a dog pooped in the first class aisle as passenger shares horrifying images of the mess that left travelers ill and took two hours to clean up. So this, I think, originally came from Reddit. A Reddit user said a dog defecated in the aisle next to the first class bathroom. So close yet so far. So the flight was traveling from Houston to Seattle. It was diverted via Dallas where ground staff tried cleaning it for two hours. Hey, it's not Delta for a change. So delayed flights are one of the most irritating parts of flying, but a flight being diverted due to a dog's defecation is much worse. That's, re that's accurate. But that was the case on a recent United Airlines flight, which was forced to land halfway through its journey after a dog relieved himself in the aisle of the plane, right outside of the first class bathroom. <laughs> Let's see, the message, the, the messy, <laughs> messy, the messy incident was captured by a Reddit user Gig Wizard. <laughs> is that like, is he a wizard at uh, doing gigs or is he like a giggle wizard? <laughs> like he's, he, he laughs or makes you laugh with magic. Who said they were on the five hour flight from Houston to Seattle when the incident occurred. <laughs> Dog had messy accident in the aisle right in first class, the passenger wrote. So this is the photo in question. <laughs> yeah, so normally you would bag your dog's mess. Something tells me this was unable to be bagged, if you catch my drift. Oh. <laughs> Get ready. Here it comes. This is the real one. This is the uncovered one. So yeah, I don't think there was any bagging that one. So the ground crew spent over two hours trying to clean the carpet with paper towels, noting the smell made them ill. Yeah. Messy. The Reddit user said the flight was diverted to Dallas-Fort Worth, where the ground crew spent over two hours trying to clean the carpet with paper towels. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, you need something better than a paper towel. So gate, ag gate agents kept yelling at passengers and then and the cabin crew they continued. The smell never quite went away. The multi-hour cleaning effect was ultimately unsuccessful after the first class toilet declared unusable. The dog mess was apparently unresolved in there. Food went bad while on the ground, so very few snacks left. So in an email, United Airlines confirmed that the incident had occurred but declined to share any other details. Uh, that is a good point. I didn't know you could board with your dog that way. I mean, I guess if it's a if it's a service dog, I don't know, or a small one they had in a I mean, if they had it in a little uh crate or something, I mean, how did it poop in the floor? <laughs> yeah, what did that dog eat? <laughs> What's the deal with airline food? It makes my dog diarrhea. <laughs> so yeah, let's see, these are comments on the post. These, this is an article. So, Someone says, all animals need to either be in a crate or in the cargo hold. Only service animals should be for the blind. You don't need an emotional support dog for a freaking plane ride. <laughs> One user raged. Yeah. <laughs> dog people are crazy and I'm sick of the he's my baby mentality of owners. It's a freaking animal and the owner should be made to clean that mess up. Take a dog on a plane, clean up your mess. I mean, that part's fair. I mean, that's like, that's crappy <laughs> pun. That's crappy making the people, the workers clean it up. I mean, if you got it in there and it's, you know, you're responsible for it. You should be made to clean it up. <laughs> Let's see. So these are all just comments. Let's see here. Here's one we can end. And on this one, somebody had another flat experience with the dog. Let's see what they said. 
The first time I flew with a dog, he escaped his bag while I was sleeping and took a crap in the aisle. <laughs> I felt so bad and I was luckily and I, I felt so bad and I was lucky it was solid. They reminisced. Yes, I like to reminisce about dog poop. Since then, I've learned to travel way better with him, and he is now better trained to stay in his bag under the seat for the whole flight. Now you don't even realize he's there. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like the... <laughs> it's fine if you want to take your dog places. Just take care of him. That's all you got to do. I mean, same with kids. If if your kid pukes all over the floor, you should help clean it up. <laughs> oh yeah, literally as I say that, Trace Lynn said the same thing. <laughs> so yeah, dog poop in airplanes. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> Caught up on comments here. Let's see. I have a lot of news here. Where? Uh, see how much more we have. Uh, no, I, can, I can probably get through it. I don't want to go too long. Or eat dinner and say goodnight to the kids. So I'm not going to stream for like two hours, but let's get through the rest of these stories here. <clears throat> we got, and now we're back to the Florida news. <laughs> Florida woman makes an appearance. Hello, hello, hello. Thanks for stopping by. This is Dr. Bad Vibes. We got more Florida news because why not? So, Florida woman Mary Hall. Well, I don't want to say. Let me start over. I hate saying people's names. It's the, it's about the story, not the people. I don't want to sh shame people, even if they do, even if they're doing something stupid. So, Florida woman discovers huge alligator has burst through screen door of her house and made itself at home in her kitchen. She was confronted by an alligator that wandered into her home. She thought she thought it was someone at the wrong house, as it, that happened often. How does that happen often? How do you just have wrong the wrong people come in your house? Anyway, well, I guess if an alligator can wander in, why not? Instead, the reptile lumbered into her kitchen until police took it to a farm. A farm. To help the dogs. So, a Florida woman heard a rattle at her door, and thinking it was someone trying to enter the wrong house, she got up to shoo them away. Instead, she was confronted by an eight-foot alligator lumbering through her home. The enormous reptile was so strong it punched open the door. Oh, the comma was in a weird place. <laughs> the enormous reptile was so strong it punched open the front door, despite the magnetic clasp keeping it in place. I think you need more than a magnet to keep anything out. So he strolled into her kitchen looking for a meal as she panicked and wondered how she was going to get the huge animal out. Hey guys, got any? Got any snacks let's take a look here we got a gallery go away video so yeah she's, <laughs> nobody wants to see that in your house so he just busted his way in he's like give me some snacks tell me hungry <laughs> luckily nobody was hurt they came prepared they said get out <laughs> Wait, what? No. How'd that happen? I'm not reading about bear grills. I'm reading about an alligator. <laughs> so, so from her account, I'm sitting on my sofa. It's late in the afternoon. I'm just watching TV and I heard my front door rattle, my screen door. I thought somebody that didn't live here was trying to come in thinking they were probably in the wrong house because that happens frequently. That keeps coming up. That you've, that should not be an issue. 
So I got off the couch and came around to the door, prepared to say you're in the wrong place. I got no further, no closer to the front door than you are right now, wherever that may be. Just close enough to look and see that it wasn't a person trying to get in. It was an alligator. So she was shaking too much to call any number but 911. Her phone was on the kitchen table, just inches from the beast. Yeah, I mean, I don't fault that. <laughs> so... So two sheriff's deputies. Wow, so it took two sheriff's deputies and three officers from the Fish and Wildlife Conservation. I mean, I'm not laughing at that. I mean, that's crazy. I would not want to mess with one of those. Never had to, thankfully. So very carefully, she sneaked up behind the alligator and snatched her phone and made the call. <laughs> they corralled the animal and clenched its jaw shut. Then three of them hauled it into a pickup truck and it was taken to an alligator farm. Farm. <laughs> the one deputy was really pretty funny because he told me that when he saw the report, he didn't believe me until he walked out of the house and saw the gator. Walked into the house and saw the gator. She believed the alligator wandered across from a pond on the other side of the road somehow unnoticed. Fair enough. Well, do not want to deal with an alligator, so... Yeah. <laughs> More nightmare fuel. You're welcome. That is a good point. If that, that thing is huge, how did she have the chill to take photos? Surely this was from... That'd have to be from the police. I would think. I don't know. I mean, that one... I guess it depends on how they came in the house. It's funny if that was her taking the photos. She's like, I'm going to be on Reddit. <laughs> Corey, a friend of mine called 911 when there was a possum on her front porch and she thought it was a radioactive rat. Well, it was not far off. <laughs> yeah, the kid would be like, cool, we got a pet. Yeah, how would it know to go to the kitchen? I guess it can smell. <laughs> Let's see. I may save two of these for next time. Let's see. How long has this been going? Yeah, I think I'll do I'll do one more story and then we'll do some drawing. I think this would be a good one to leave on. <laughs> Save these other ones for next time. So this one Jen sent me and I love the headline. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. This is Dr. Bad Vibes Fank. Thanks for stopping by. Got some gross news. <laughs> Giant globster washes up on the beach. A disgusting mass of flesh horrifies locals after emerging from the sea in Malaysia. So Jen sent me this. I didn't know what the hell a globster was. I had to Google it. So it, it, it's actually a thing. It's not like some kind of uh, weird lobster monster. Uh, it Well, it, it explains here. So the disgusting globster, an un unidentified organic mass. That's basically the definition of it. Like when these big... They generally think they're like whale carcasses, sometimes like shark or other big fish. Basically, rotten carcasses that combine with other crap in the sea and they wash up on shore and look like monster nightmare fuel. And that's where the globster comes from. So the disgusting globster is believed to be the remains of a whale which emerged from the sea on Tulak Milano Beach around 12 p.m. last Friday. Masses like this one, which are also known as blobs, often turn out to be the carcasses of whales, sharks, or octopuses. If I'd read the article, I wouldn't have had to look it up. <laughs> Only a DNA test will be able to identify what the globster used to be <laughs> before it washed ashore as the approximately six-foot-long rotting mass. 
Oh, it's so gross and so funny. The Coast Guard... <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, can we pickle it? The Coast Guard, which found the Globster during a beach patrol, shared footage of the giant brown and white Globster on social media, including a video where horrified locals inspect the mess. Oh yeah, that's that's disgusting. So let's look at it. <laughs> so the disgusting Globster. I love these words. I'm glad I'm able to say these words. That's pretty gross. <laughs> so they, they think this one was the remains of a whale. Stupid Daily Mail is trying to make me read about freaking Bear Grylls every time I finish a... Uh, Album gallery. <laughs> so let's see. Lost my place. Okay. So the coastal rescue team found the body of a whale stranded on Milano Bay Beach around noon. Members on duty found the body while conducting surveillance around the beach. One commenter under the post wrote, Poor thing, unfortunate, but a rare find, while another called the Globster creepy. Yeah. This is not the first time a Globster washed up on a beach. I bet those smell terrific. <laughs> Back in 2018, a huge hairy sea creature was found in the Philippines. <laughs> Sparking fears is an omen that a natural disaster is looming. Fair enough. I wouldn't argue against that if I saw something like that. <laughs> like, we're, we're screwed. Time to go. Yeah, he's pretty gross. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, villagers flocked to see the enormous cops. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting ahead and laughing. Villagers flocked to see the enormous carcass of the globster and pose for selfies. <laughs> That's total selfie material, right? Marine workers took samples from the strange creature, which is four feet wide at one end and two feet wide at the other. They said the grayish white blob smelled awful and like something from another planet. And some residents were left fearing the dead animal was a warning that a natural disaster. Yeah, so that's referencing the old one. Yes, that was me in the Philippines. I was trying to have a getaway, but everybody got nosy. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that may be a good place to stop the news. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Because we've got enough ammo to draw something. I'll draw a thing or two. Yeah, release the Kraken. Oh yeah, hey, welcome back, Joy. You made it back just in time to draw some nonsense. <laughs> so obviously, whatever we draw has to... Oh. Maybe we should draw Globster versus Alligator fighting over a snack in the kitchen. <laughs> so everybody th what does everybody think about that? Any other ideas? Excuse me. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I like the idea of the, the Globster, some kind of uh, Cronenberg <laughs> horror. Um, oh yeah, yeah, something I meant to do. Let me do this real quick. Set up so I can play some music in the background so it's not just me awkwardly like breathing and drawing. Wait, wait. 
It's lobster wearing ill-fitting beige beige outfits clawing onto the mule. That could be done too. Let's start with Slobster versus Alligator, then I'll draw Markle Slobster. Let's see, what should a Slobster look like? Let me, uh... Add up here. Everybody, everybody wants Megan, so I'll start with her. I'll do the Megan Slobster. Slobster. I just start drawing her by memory. I don't feel like I'm able to do that as much as I've seen her on Jen's channel. make it make sense. What was that playlist is covering up the chat. Sorry, I planned so well for this. There we go. Totally just making this up as I go along. I have no idea what a humanoid globster should look like.
Yeah. Um, he's the... You're delicious, boss. Let's see if I can... I don't... I've kind of just been doing black and white. Let's see if I can color this one. Find something gross. Yeah, Joy, they asked me to draw her as the Glopter. Okay, screw it. Colored in like a child. It's not really cooperate. Lobster. anything else
I'll make it make sense. <laughs> Somebody's got a poop on Dr. Phil. How's that? <laughs> We're trying to stop oscillating. <laughs> Please give me the cream. There's some hairs coming off of him. It came out a lot grosser than I meant. <laughs> Maybe I should tweet this out. If anybody wants to save this, maybe I'll, I'll tweet it out and I'll get Jen to retweet it. <laughs> That was fun. I hope everybody had fun with that. <laughs> Anything to add to it? I feel like it's good if I make myself laugh. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll save it. I'll tweet it. I'll send a copy to Jen so she can do something with. It. I don't know what this can go on her channel. Oh, 
Oh yeah, red. <laughs> yeah, Jen's gonna share this about what the hell is he doing on his channel? <laughs> Oh gosh. Well, I have a degree. <laughs> I use it. Yeah, no context. Just tweet it out and see what happens. That is the sad thing. You could probably just tweet it out with no context and they'll be like, oh. <laughs> I art. I arted. <laughs> Mummy scream. I know. I feel like. I feel like I need to do one of just him to make it extra disgusting with the cream. Well, Tanya, thanks for hanging out. It's been great chatting with you as usual. <laughs> Hope you have a good evening. Uh... I may be in the same boat. I've been going on for a little over an hour. Um, I want to stream longer, but, um, I'm hungry and the kids are going to have to go to bed soon, so I don't want to miss that. But I'll probably do another stream soon. I don't know when. Jen's got, don't forget, Jen's got hers with, uh, one half of the Sidley twins on Sunday. So I might, maybe I'll work around that somehow. Uh, I'm sure that information will be up soon. She mentioned it earlier. It's like Sunday at whatever time, afternoon time. Oh, I'm sure my family's so proud of me. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, We'll see how the streams line up. I'll do I'll do another one again. I'm I'm having fun doing the uh, the drawing. So definitely uh, I'm gonna put my email in the chat one more time. Um, as soon as I click the right spot. So Doctor Bad Vibes at protonmail.com. If you got any ideas or silly stuff to share, just send it to me. If you got any drawing requests, definitely send those. And I'll gather some new new news. <laughs> and well been great hanging out. Thanks for stopping by. Um Everybody's quit watching on Twitch, so it's not even worth doing a raid. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to keep practicing on drawing. Maybe I can get the screen a little. That's the thing with using an iPad. I can't really get it to cover the whole screen, so maybe I need to. I have an older version of my the software that's on the iPad. I can put it on Windows. Maybe I can just draw a little more clearly, larger. 
but thanks yeah thanks again everybody thanks for hanging out i'm going to end it here but we'll let you know next time we're going to live stream I'm trying to make this a more regular thing and thanks once again for everybody that subscribed it's been hanging out uh this watch time is important it adds up it definitely um has gotten me closer to being legitimate <laughs> on this channel and that will help uh youtube push me out more and i can keep doing more silly stupid stuff uh i should be close now but yeah just be sure to watch everything and uh, check out the old stuff too like i did a dr uh, drawing on uh the last couple of streams so yeah just play them in the background <laughs> you don't even have to watch them so thanks again everybody i hope to see you next time bye